vision in the exchanges? I think everything is, is a key uh, point in the fight. You know, you got my jab, you got my movement, you got my counter punching ability, you got, you know, uh, just my, my, my brain, the way I think, just all around. Could it be a little similar to the fight we just saw Taylor and T.O.? Uh, you know, Spence being Taylor, natural, bigger guy, better jab, but T.O. more creative. Taking advantage of, of his in-between shots? No, I think I think I can't I can't really compare Arrow to Josh Taylor. I think it's two different styles, you know, so I wouldn't use that as a, a blueprint. Is there a parallel in that more creative fighter one and that'll be the case in this fight? Yeah, I, I feel as if Arrow will make more adjustments along the way and he wouldn't just fight the same fight every um, the whole fight. I expect him to be, you know, making adjustments along the way, and he's a great professional. I remember you said, because he was saying you're light in the ass, and then you told him, no, you're fat, you know, a couple years ago. Um, does he look a little heavy, six, seven weeks out? Did he look heavy a couple weeks ago? Look, look, all that matters is he weigh in at 147 come Friday, and that's all that matters. We're going to be the same weight come weigh-ins. So what he weigh now, what he weighed then, it really doesn't matter. Marcus the fight hub. What's your mentality uh, for going into this fight? You've waited so long. So much has been said. Uh, now you're heading into the kill zone. What's your mentality? I'm just excited. I'm excited. I'm ready to get back to camp and get back to work. We've been having a great start to camp. And come July 29th, everything will show. We saw the big send off with you in Omaha. Emotionally, what did that do for you? Well, emotionally, that just showed me what I already knew, that my city and my people, they behind me and they support me. And that's all that showed me. And I want to give them a little gift of being able to send me off and wish me well. What were you saying to them up there, Terrence? What were you saying to Harold? Oh, no, it was just letting each other know that it's, it's, it's time. We're here now, and there's no more talk. There's no more wrong side of the street. There's no nothing. You know, we both here. We both acknowledging that, you know, this is that moment. This is about to be the... At this point in time, as far as respect, you know, you pretty much said you did it easy. You made the fights look easy in the welterweight division. How do you feel about this particular fight finally happening and they were giving you your respect? I feel, I feel as if, you know, after this fight, everybody that had something negative to say about Terrence Crawford, you know, they will eat their words and they will give me the respect that I rightfully deserve. And so be it. If they don't, then, you know, that's something they will have to deal with. Terrence, Terrence you've always been known to be a quiet, humble guy, kind of to yourself. But for this one, obviously seeing all the bright lights, seeing all the media, and just the different things that weren't there for all the previous fights, how special of a moment is it to see you at the biggest stage of the sport? Oh, I, I feel as if I was made for this, this moment, you know. Sometimes I just really didn't have too much to say because those wasn't the actual fights that I really was gearing towards. I've been calling these guys out since 2018. I came in the division, went straight to the title. I didn't have any tune-ups. I didn't want any uh, easy fights. I wanted all the top name fighters in the welterweight division. And so rightfully so, I got Jeff Horn in my first fight coming off a victory against Manny Pacquiao. If Manny Pacquiao would have been victorious, it would have been Terrence Crawford versus Manny Pacquiao. So, you know, I, I fight anybody that's put in front of me. You say you reached out to um, you know, Errol Spence. What, what brought that moment when you said you was the one that called Errol Spence? Were you talking with your team? Did you feel it was the right moment? Meaning what happened on the 22 negotiations? No, I just text him. I just text him. You know, I think it was January 1st or January 2nd. And I just let them know, like, hey, what's up? Let's fight. You know, you don't have no fight. I don't have no fight. Let's get it done. And let's stop playing around. Let's stop, you know, putting everybody in the, in the fought in everybody. You know, talk to Al, talk to this person, talk to that person. I'm coming to you man to man. You, they work for you. You talk to them, I talk to my people, and let's come together and see what we can do to make this fight happen. You handling yourself in between your fights, staying disciplined. You always put your training videos out. Do you think that will play a primary role in you and Errol Spence, um, you know, fight July 29th? Who knows? You know, uh, we don't know what Errol Spence Jr. is doing when the cameras is not on him. I'm not the type of guy that always put the cameras on me or show what I'm doing all the time. So. 
he could be playing possum. I don't, you know, put it past nobody. I don't get overconfident or anything. I just make sure that I'm doing the things that I need to do to better Terrence Crawford. All right, guys, thank you. We got to slide him down.